let us solve some quadratic and uh, other equations. Okay, so the first question is x squared minus 4x plus 5 is equal to 0. So the method that I'm going to use is called uh, solving by completing square. Now, to do that, it is x squared uh, minus 4x plus 4. Now, how did I get that 4? So you, what you do is you uh, find the half of negative 4. So half of negative 4 is negative 2. And then so you square that number, that is negative 2 squared is 4. So if you go these two steps, what you're getting is a perfect square. So this is a perfect square. But now I have to think that this 4 is not something that we had. So I'm going to do minus 4 plus 5 is equal to 0. So basically, my plus 4 and minus 4 gets cancelled, so this and this are the same. Okay. But what has happened because of that, you've got a quadratic form which is called the vertex form. So we'll understand this graphically. So what does this mean graphically? This means, the oh, sorry, this has to be minus 2. I get carried away. You should not be careless. So this is x minus 2, the whole squared, plus 1. Now to understand this graphically, this in real numbers, it doesn't have any solution. So this means your parabola, this is your x-axis, and this is your y-axis. This parabola, by looking at this equation, I can say that this parabola, the basic parabola I'm talking about, y is equal to x squared, and I'm saying that there's a transformation is always with respect to this basic parabola. So I can say the basic parabola y is equal to x squared has moved 2 to the right and has gone 1 up. So your parabola would uh, look somewhat like this. So this is, okay. So this, from this I can say this is your y-intercept, sorry, y-axis. This is x-axis, sorry. So your vertex, this is the 2 on the x-axis, and this is 1 on the y-axis. So this point, your vertex, or your minimum, or your turning point is 2 comma 1. So let me show you that on a calculator. So let us graph this equation, y is equal to, menu graph, x squared minus 4x plus 5. Can you see this is your parabola? So the minimum is, your minimum is 2 comma 1. So here, graphically you can understand this is not going to intersect the x-axis anywhere. So this parabola is never going to become zero. Or this, the value of the function, or whatever value of x you take, your minimum value that you can have for y is 1. And all values will be above 1. I hope you can understand this graphically. If you put in any value for x, this graph tells me you cannot have a value which is less than 1. That's what this equation tells me. But any equation, if you think in a logical way, any equation has to have a solution. Okay, In real numbers, there are no solutions. So if you are learning, if you have learned only real numbers, you can say there are no real roots. There are no real roots. That means there are no solution in real numbers. This implies there are no solution. There are no answer solution. The simple word for solution is no answer in real numbers. But if you think mathematically in real numbers, in real numbers. So now we have to think of a new set of numbers where you can get the roots. There are no, there are no answers in real numbers. Okay. So now, as I said uh, before, any root has to have an equation. So uh, I am uh, uh, so 
let us look at the solution and uh, so I uh, stop uh, sorry for stopping I had to stop uh, because someone came to my room so yeah uh, continuing with this so there are no real roots here but if you think in a logical way any equation has to have a solution so we have to think of a new set of numbers okay and that is where we come to imaginary numbers so going to the next step can I write x minus 2 the whole squared is equal to negative 1 so mathematicians when they came to this solution this type of equation you had you cannot find square root of a negative number because if you square any number it's always positive so square root of a negative number in real numbers is not defined you can't find the square root of a negative number so mathematicians came up with a solution they said well what if we say we define this as i squared this is a definition this is by definition okay so let me write by definition okay we are developing a new set of numbers minus 1 is i squared which means i by definition is square root of negative 1 okay and i you i can't show this in a uh, 2d way if you can think of a third axis which is called the z axis so let me draw a z axis like this imagine an axis which is going away from you i hope you can see this this is your z axis now if you can imagine a xz plane your z numbers your i is in this plane in xz plane so this is a 1i this is 1i i'll write i this is a 2i and 3i and so on and on this you can write this is minus i this is minus 2i and so on this is so let me so this is minus i i hope you can see and i'm not confusing you this is minus 2i so if you can visualize if you can see uh, the uh, the xz plane okay which is perpendicular to the xy plane your the screen is your xy plane so if you can imagine a plane which is perpendicular to the xy plane which is the xz plane you can get suppose this number a, a point which corresponds to 2 on the x axis so i'll come to that later so let me go further where okay so what would be the next step so i can say x I'll let me rewrite this so x minus 2 the whole squared is equal to r squared so now taking square root of both sides i can say x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus square root of i squared which is equal to plus or minus i which is equal to plus or minus i so let me rewrite this so the second say x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus i and this implies x is equal to adding 2 to both sides adding 2 to both sides i can say x is equal to 2 plus i or 2 plus or minus i so you got two roots here this is a this is called a complex root so you can say x1 the first root is 2 minus i the first root is 2 minus i and the second root is 2 plus i now it's very difficult to explain how these are roots uh, actually 2 plus i is in this plane okay so 2 it's actually a point 2 plus i is in fact a point in a plane any po a point on a line uh, suppose if you take any point on this line on the x-axis is your real numbers but now when you come to think of complex numbers it is a point which corresponds to 2 on the x-axis and say and i on the imaginary axis so this is a 2 plus i may come here imagine a plane this is not in the xy axis it is in the xz plane and 2 minus i is say somewhere here it's very difficult to show a 3d figure in a 2d uh, frame 
So the two x, two roots are 2 plus i and 2 minus i. Now, if you want to do this on the calculator, if you want to check this answer on the calculator, you have to go to your equation menu and now look up your setup. Okay, first let me look up your setup. In your setup, it should be in this, it should not be real number, it should be a plus b i form. And then you go to polynomial and second degree. So you can type in 1, negative 4, and 5. And then you go to solve. Your, 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 your roots, 2 plus i, this is 2 plus i, and 2 minus i. Hopefully, I'll uh, make other, i got other equations to do. We'll do these equations in my next video. Hopefully, see you in the next video.